Did you know that most travel trailers don't come with shock absorbers? On this week's show, Michelle Fontaine gets a Roadmaster dual shock setup installed on her trailer and wait till you see the before and after difference. Then, Jeff Johnston decides to install a dual battery setup for his new Palomino truck camper to go along with the recently installed Go Power solar system. With the popularity of vans and adventure camping all across the country, Jeff takes us to the Adventure Van Expo to see what's new and exciting in this fast-growing category of RVing. Then, later on Paws On Board, Dr. Fitz explains to us what we should know about pet anxieties and what you can do to keep your pet calm and ready to enjoy their RV adventures. These stories and more on this week's RV Today TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Go Power. Today we're going up to Windham, Maine to Lee's Family Trailer Sales and Service. And we're going up there to have a couple of things installed on Emma, our grand design. And then we'll be bringing her home tomorrow. Randy, the service tech on our project, handles this 150 pound box like it's a bag of potatoes. Dennis is also working on our project. And what is our project? After learning that most travel trailers don't have shock absorbers, and that travel trailers can experience shaking on the road that measures 3.2 on the earthquake Richter scale, we decided to install the Roadmaster shock absorbers and Comfort Ride slipper spring system. While Randy and Dennis are installing the Roadmaster system, let's find out more about Lee's family trailer sales and service. They have a huge inventory here. And Dan Crofty, the owner, has kindly agreed to show us around. Yes, welcome to Maine. This is a 29 GO, go, 29 go. Right. And uh, it's got a beautiful open deck to put your ATVs or motorcycles. It's got, uh, use it for a deck after. You can, uh, there's a cooking station out there, television. We just got a Solus from Winnebago. We've already sold a few of them. We got our first one in and it's the old style VW Westphalia uh, with the pop-up, but what a beautiful layout. Uh, Mini Winnies, uh, we can't keep them in stock. They're Class C, fit and finish, is beautiful. They've uh, had a great reputation for oh, a long time, the Mini terrific, Winnies. Terrific, terrific. Uh, Maybach is a Nexus, uh, that's, that's a sold unit, and uh, uh, very, very nice unit. Uh, Alliance, we're, we're the fifth wheel capital of, of New England here at Lee's. We have three lines. We got the uh, Montana, we got the Cougar, we got the Reflection, and we got the Solitude. These are the travel trailers here. We have, we're a big grand design dealer. We, we love the grand design. Uh, transcends, imagines, reflections. I remember when they came out with the Transcend. Wasn't it about three years ago in Louisville yeah. they introduced it? Yes. Little tabs and tags are on fire. I mean, we bring in 12 and they're gone within a couple weeks. Uh, we just sold our first GeoPro, so we're pretty excited to rock with that's a beautiful unit. So this is, as far as you can see, we purchased 20, 20 acres. 20 and, acres. And we'll probably have seven or eight as full RV full of RVs, so it's it's going to be uh, impressive, and we're doing the PDI facility down here. We have a big rental fleet, and uh, motorhomes and travel trailers. We'll bring the travel trailer right to your site. Uh, we'll show you how to use it. A really good way of seeing if you like it. Um, when I purchased this place, we really put an emphasis on service. So I added uh, uh, eight more bays, uh, drive-through, uh, large large addition to go with the uh, present service building, and uh, we're. We're trying to find some really good RV techs. We're just growing so fast. So if anybody's mm -hmm. out there that wants a great career and, and uh, wants a great place to work, uh, give me a call at Lee's Family Trailer. Okay, let's check back in on our Roadmaster suspension install. Almost done. Here's a tip. The U-bolts don't come with the suspension kit as they often don't need new ones. However, this is a really good time to inspect your U-bolts. If they're corroded, it's a good time to replace them. 
In our case, the job did need longer U-bolts, which held it up for a couple of hours. So just uh, be aware of that. Also, be aware that this lifts the trailer. In our case, three inches. So we had to make sure that our weight distribution system didn't need adjusting. And it did not. It was fine. In order to capture the effectiveness of the suspension, before we had the install done, we placed a container of water inside and drove down, very slowly, a bumpy road. Notice the rug on the left. After the installation of the suspension system, we went down that same road to see what happens with the water now. I think what was more interesting is what was happening to the chair on the left in the rug. That's the slider. You can see less bounce after the installation than before, which means the trailer should last longer, components should last longer, less shake in the trailer overall. So we just left Lee's family trailer in Windham, Maine, and they installed the Roadmaster suspension system. And we're just on the highway now. She feels really good. She's three inches higher than she was before. Feels rock solid, very nice to drive. Oh wow, that truck just went by us. I didn't feel it at all. Driving cross country two times a year, but one of the things on the highway, if you're not always watching that mirror and a truck creeps up on you, it's almost like you lose control for a half a second. And honestly, I knew that truck was coming. I could see it. I didn't feel it at all. So wow, that's a big, big benefit. Anything that causes less anxiety while you're driving, isn't that what it's all about? Thank you very much to Roadmaster for the suspension system and to Lee's family trailer for helping us get it onto our Emma Grand Design. And we're also very thankful to get her home again. When Bedford launched Aquachem, it didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. Many RVs come with one battery, but owners often add a second battery to extend off-grid camping time and power reliability. We definitely needed a second battery in our Palomino, and we started with the factory option second battery tray. The project as outlined and as we started it falls in the best laid plans category. To finish up the electrical part of our Palomino camper setup, we're going with the double battery system. Now the optional battery tray, the second tray for the Palomino, is on the outside of the body, uh, which means the battery is exposed to the open air. For that reason, we decided not to go with lithiums because uh, lithium batteries still have problems when it gets down around freezing or colder. AGM batteries are a lot better suited for exposure to cold climates. We decided to use these SunCycle AGM or Absorb Glass Mat batteries from GoPower because they serve well with the complete GoPower solar charging system we already installed in our Palomino. And these are made and designed for basically uh, solar use as well as other purposes, but for solar charging these guys work great. Now these are rated at 224 amp hour capacity, which is terrific. That's a lot of power. 
when you're using a pair of 12 volt batteries to get a dual battery system, you hook them up parallel and you've got your 12 volts. In this case, we're working with six volt batteries. So the positive on one six volt battery goes to the uh, camper. The negative on that battery goes to the positive on the second battery. And the negative on the second battery also goes to the camper. The net result is 12 volts at a really nice amp hour rating. Palomino's optional second battery tray fits outside the camper. But it wasn't going to fit. Once in place, we measured again compared to the Ram truck bed and found it was just too tight a space. We opted to fit both batteries inside the interior utility compartment. The original battery was positioned sideways in a vented enclosure, which we didn't need for the new sealed AGM batteries. We installed some floor strips to keep the batteries from sliding around. The helpful crew at AM Solar in Springfield, Oregon, helped us with trimming the big cables to size and installing the crimp-on terminals. Working with this large cable can be tricky. It was a snug fit, but the AGMs both fit in the compartment, mounted front to back. The wiring still needs to be cleaned up, but everything works, and the setup provides more than enough power for our modest needs. A second battery may be just right for your RV as well. It's a good investment. From off-the-road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. Today's location, the slopes of beautiful Mount Hood, Oregon. We're here to attend the Adventure Van Expo. The Adventure Van Expo is sort of an event that represents one extreme of RVing. That is to say, people who've taken Class B type motorhomes and built them into rugged, off-road, off the beaten track type adventure vehicles. Well, the Expo is a gathering of vehicles like that where they exchange ideas, look at cool new products and so on. We think it'll be a pretty fun thing to see, so come on along and let's go take a look. The Expo occupied a good portion of the parking lot at the Mount Hood Meadows Ski Area. We're here at the Adventure Van Expo at Mount Hood, and Adventure Vans are built out uh, Sprinters and Mercedes vehicles that have been customized for special purposes. Um, sports, road trips, um, some people live in them. Um, and what we have today is actually uh, a show put together with probably some of the best builders um, all over the Pacific Northwest and, you know, basically from the West. We're drawing from uh, Washington and Southern California as well. An adventure van is a Class B motorhome, generally outfitted with features designed for longer-term, off-the-grid living in comfort. Many have four-wheel drive for go-anywhere capability. Spectators can learn a lot from seeing the adventure vans on display. One company on display helps new do-it-yourself type owners with van design and construction. My name is Alex. I'm here representing DIY Van. Uh, we're located in Hood River and we help people in the initial stages of their build. So they bring us an empty van, tell us the direction they want to go, and we provide the first uh, crucial steps in, uh, to get them in that direction. One is insulation and two is product support when it comes to fans, solar insulation, wiring, and that just gets them going. Um, and then they have a pretty good idea from when they stop by uh, where they want to take their their van build to the next level. 
The relatively small size of a van means owners need to be clever about designing an efficient but comfortable interior plus suitable exterior storage facilities. An old favorite, Volkswagen vans with camping conversions were also present at the event. It can be successfully argued that Sportsmobile was instrumental in shaping and improving the entire adventure van class of RVs. We stopped by the Sportsmobile booth where the owner, Alan Feld, has a pretty exciting new product to tell us about. This is the new Sportsmobile Classic, and we developed it over the last couple of years after Ford discontinued their Econoline in 2015. But it was such a popular truck for us that we're getting the uh, cutaway chassis from Ford, so the front end is Ford, and we're building the whole back rear half out of fiberglass and then linexing it with a Raptor liner lining on the outside. And then we're putting all our own interiors in, just like the old Sportsmobiles, but it's got our four-wheel drive system, which has the Dynatrack axle axle, the Atlas transfer case, and custom Fox suspension. So it's all the good stuff that we've been using in the past, but on a brand new cutaway chassis from Ford. Event attendees can learn about a wide range of specialized camping and vehicle products on display. Yeah, so what we've got here today is the uh, pop-up pit from Fireside Outdoor. This is a portable fire pit. Uh, that is quite unique in that it allows for having uh, open fire uh, virtually anywhere. It's a uh, small portable design with a proprietary stainless steel mesh that allows you to burn firewood or charcoal right on the mesh. The heat shield underneath it protects the ground or the surface that the fire is on, uh, protecting it from the fire. You could have this on a, uh, a wood deck, asphalt uh, driveway, uh, on your grass, and it just won't damage anything. It's, uh, it's excellent for uh, leave no trace and being able to have a, a fire wherever, campfire wherever you like. So today we're looking at our uh, Rad Mini. Um, this is our folding e-bike and so really popular with the van guys um, as they can store it a little bit easier. You're going to have a 750 watt motor in the back. That's basically going to be two of me pedaling at full steam behind you. Um, right behind the seat here we have our battery. That's going to give you 25 to 45 mi miles worth of riding, um, and it'll keep you at 20 miles an hour for that. Um, the coolest feature about this bike, though, is that it is going to fold down. Oh, great. So if we switch the latch here and swing it around, we can actually break the frame. And then we'll swing this around. Oh and it's got a little stand there on the bottom, so it doesn't damage any of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Pop the latch here, and then it's going to fold down. That way you can tuck it right into your van or RV, um, and it's going to hide away nice and neat. Very nice. Uh, my name's Tyler from Guzzle H2O, and um, what we're looking at here is our product called the Spigot Stealth, which is a onboard water filtration and purification system. It's got a carbon block filter and an LED-based uh, UV purification system and you hook it up in your RV between the water pump and the faucet and it uh, makes your water taste great and it kills 99.99% of any uh, microbiological hazard that might be in your water. While wandering around here at the Adventure Van Expo, guess who we ran into? Our friends, the Russos. Hey guys. Hi. Are you guys enjoying the visit here? It's awesome. I mean, this is kind of like a miniature Overland Expo, but just for vans. Just for vans, yeah. Just to, it, it, it's really nice to see something with this kind of a specific uh, focused interest. Sportsmobiles got their classic. Oh, that thing is awesome. Oh, I yeah. love the classic. I'm glad they brought it back. The texture one? That, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is nice. Uh, Nomad vans. Nomad? Has some really nice polished stuff. Okay, well, we'll stop on down and take a look. Absolutely. We're here to cover the show. So, uh, yeah. Well, good. Well, it's good to see you guys, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see right. you, too, Jeff. If serious backcountry RVing is in your plans, check out an Adventure Van Expo. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. 
Bedford launched AquaChem. It didn't take long before it became the number one selling holding tank treatment for over 50 years. Until now. Meet Aquamax, Thetford's new generation of holding tank products that works even better and are also campground friendly and environmentally safe. Looks like a new number one is taking over. For more information, visit Thetford.com. Pause on Board is brought to you by Jones Natural Chews, American sourced and made in America. Welcome to RVing Today's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz and this is Georgie. Is your dog panting and restless whenever they're in the car? Or does your cat meow for the entire trip? If you've seen these signs, your pet likely has travel anxiety. Some animals struggle primarily with longer road trips, but pets can also be anxious during the short rides as well. Some animals struggle primarily with longer road trips, but pets can also be anxious during the short rides as well. So how can you tell if your pet suffers from travel anxiety? If you have a cat, you know that they can be very subtle when it comes to body language and communicating with their owners. But look for a cat that's restless, can't get comfortable in its carrier, is meowing repeatedly, and may even urinate or defecate in the carrier. Dogs overall are a little less subtle. You may notice panting, drooling, restlessness, repeated whining or barking, and even urination or defecation in the car. Some owners even have difficulty getting their dogs into the car in the first place. It's important to note that some of these signs are very, very similar to motion sickness. In, in a season one episode of Paws on Board, I discuss pet car sickness, some ways to prevent it, and possible treatment options. So check out that episode if you think your pet may be car sick instead of anxious. Travel anxiety can be reduced in several ways. One of the most important methods is positive reinforcement and training. Medications only get us so far, and working your pet through some of the anxiety can be immensely helpful. For example, make the car or the carrier a positive place for your pet to be. Allow your dog to get in and out of the car, even if you don't actually go for a ride. Give them treats or play with a toy after they're in the car. And for cats, leave the carrier out at home and feed meals or treats near it to get them acclimated. Making sure that your pet is in a comfortable position in the car can be helpful as well. Cat carriers or crates should face front and have comfortable bedding inside. Dogs should be in a crate or belted in with some ability to change positions easily. For long trips, also make sure that your pet is able to relieve themselves regularly. We stop at rest areas when we travel, our pets should have that same opportunity. In spite of positive reinforcement, anxious pets generally need some type of medication to keep them calm. There are many prescription medications available, but there's also nutraceutical options for our pets. There are even some calming pheromones available as sprays or collars. As always, not every medication is appropriate for every pet and some pets need more than one medication to keep them calm and happy. Before giving your dog or cat any medication, consult with your vet to find the best treatment option for the situation. Let your vet know how you'll be traveling and how long the trip will be. This helps us to develop a plan that can keep both you and your pet happy on the trip. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit rvingtoday.tv. Tune in next time for more pet health information I'm Dr. Fitz, and this is Georgie. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, along with additional videos, interesting stories, and RV news, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv.
This has been another fun production.